On this episode on Cup of Joe, area sales managers Nolan Wilkins, Brian Rigganitter, and Danny Winings talk about what they're hearing from farmers in their area about concerns going into the 2019 crop season. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Cup of Joe, episode number 12. We have a special uh, episode today. We've actually uh, invited three of our salespeople in today to talk about some of the things that are going on in the grassroots, and I'd like to introduce them and know. We'll, one by one, we'll go through uh, what they have to say, what's going on, uh, and what's concerning farmers right now. I've got Nolan Wilkins here, and uh, Nolan, uh, tell us wh- what area you work for Mershman Seeds. So I cover uh, Area 15, and that is uh, Western Illinois. I cover about 22 counties in Western Illinois. What's on farmers' minds right now? What's keeping them up at night? So I talk to quite a few guys in my territory. Um, tariffs uh, are obviously on the forefront of their mind how they can market their grain. Also input prices, um, guys are trying to cut back on on some input prices and figuring out ways they can do things themselves on the farm, maybe such as fertilizer applications, um, how fast they can get through a, a season because obviously weather is on their mind a lot. And uh, it's all about how fast they can get something done anymore. It seems like guys are trying to buy maybe two planters, two combines. Um, to try to get through a season a lot faster is what we talk about. So, Nolan, what, what are some of the things that you've come up with to maybe suggest to help uh, lower those uh, input costs? Well, uh, we look at, obviously, uh, seed price for us is a big one because, obviously, we're selling them seed. Um, we offer, you know, finance programs um, to maybe lock in their, their seed early and still carry a good cash discount. Um a lot of guys ask me personally about some of the things we do on our farm and um, they ask me about some of the equipment we run and I can give some insight on that. Um, What about seeding rates? We do pull seeding rates down um, with with soybeans. Um, With our soybeans we recommend pulling our our seeding rates down a little bit uh, and still get still get the good the yields that they're needing. With some of the germs that you're seeing through Mershman, I mean mm-hmm. we're, we're in the, uh, somewhere close to the mid 90s sure. in germination. Sure. What's your recommended rates on your planting population nowadays in your area? I, I would say, depending on weather, looking at the weather outlook, some guys can pull down to the 120 to 130 thousand range. Um, mm-hmm. you, you do talk to some people and they're like, I, I'm not comfortable going that low. Um, but I have seen some guys pull it down to 115 to 130 in that range, still get a really good yield. Now, obviously, looking at a weather outlook, if you have <clears throat> if you have a, a, a cold, wet spell coming up, you maybe either not want to plant or maybe bump that seeding rate up just to about 140,000 or a little bit. Is that on 15 inch rows or 30s or? Uh, yeah, 15 inch rows a lot are a lot of my guys are on, and uh, 30s they can they can pull it down to 120 to 30 also. And as far as herbicides go, we do have a couple rebate programs uh, with uh, with two different uh, companies uh, for Liberty Link and uh, Interline. Yes, yes, we do. We we offer uh, Interline through UPL, and they can they can get up to four dollars an acre off on on their chemical programs. Uh, four dollars an acre off on their chemical programs, and they can uh, get money back on their, if they're using Liberty Link branded products too, if they're playing straight Liberty Link varieties. And that would be through BASF, Through right? BASF, yes. So correct. one for uh, Interline, the generic uh, yep. manufacturer combination of pre-emergence and, uh, and their Interline, which is uh, a glufosinate. And of course, uh, BSF has a program for, uh, for Liberty, which would involve uh, a rebate, and, and it's based on per bag, correct? Yes, they, there there's certain um, s- certain limitations. You I mean, you have to buy so many units of of either Liberty Link <clears throat> or LLGT twenty seven soybeans to qualify for these rebates, um, and that that would be something looking into, especially if you spray your own, you can save quite a bit of money um, on the input side. Okay, well, so bundling seed and chemicals together, Correct. right products, uh, those are things that they need to talk to their chemical yes. supplier about. To, make sure they're taking advantage of that. So, yeah, the tariff thing, I don't know what we can do about that other than to uh, encourage uh, um, trade talks. And, and and right now it looks like we're headed in the right direction. It appears to me that China and the U.S. are going to have to get together. Right. Right. My next uh, guest is uh, 
Brian Riganator. And Brian, uh, tell us uh, what area you work for Mercerman Seeds. Sure, Joe. I, uh, I cover eastern Iowa, northeast Iowa, uh, northern Illinois, and southern Wisconsin currently. And I guess the, the issue that I've been kind of hearing a lot about, um, kind of to piggyback a little off of what Nolan said, was, um, you know, tight margins in, in, in agriculture right now, in farming, row crop farming especially, and um, uh, dealing with uh, tight cash flows. And with that, people are always looking for ways to add value to the crops they're currently growing. Mm-hmm. And so, the, you know, there's lots of programs out there being released, uh, non-GMO programs, but uh, I just the, the the conversation I'm having with my with my growers is uh, to understand that a higher commodity price does not mean uh, better bottom line with profit uh, because there you have to consider the big picture on you know what as an industry we're trying to to and Danny I'm sure will piggyback off this but we're trying to control this weed resistance issue and non-GMO. Um, has not been working in my area. It, it's been failing um, most people. Not saying that it cannot work, but it's uh, highly managed. Yeah, and it's all about the wheat seed bank. You know, if if you're not, if, if you go a non-GMO program, you're probably going to be building your, your right. wheat seed bank, which is absolutely the worst thing that can happen. Correct, and it, and that it it affects everyone. I mean, that doesn't just affect you on your farm. It's going to affect everyone around you as well. So that's kind of what uh, one of the big issues that we've been talking about. And with tight margins, and kind of to go off of a little what Nolan said, is with the recommendations we have for lower seeding rates, um, guys that are planting 160000 still, um, my conversation is, you want me to save you 10% on your seed cost? Just plant 10% less. Yeah. And that is one easy, quick way to, uh, to lower your input costs. That's lower input cost and increase profitability because right. basically what we've seen in the past at, at lower planting rates, we're seeing an, an uptick in yields as well. Absolutely. Well, yes. the, the key thing you have to remember with lower planting rates is you've got to have a good weed control program mm-hmm. too because sunlight's never wasted, you know. There's mm-hmm. going to be a weed growing right. there if there's not a soybean growing there. Sure. So that pre-emerge is really critical to get that on and then and then hitting that, that post-emergence product when the weeds are two to four inches tall. I mean, yeah. they're... And of course, you got to watch the weather, obviously. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else, uh, Brian, that you're running into that farmers are concerned about and uh, uh, besides uh, tight margins? Yeah, that is um, moving forward. The the trait issues, um, you know, the not issues, but the trait um, options they have now and some misunderstandings about what is what I think is important, the difference between extend and enlist and liberty link gt27 and liberty link and that is an important Absolutely. thing that they they need to understand extend the extend program and the enlist no program that have no compatibility and that i think is going to be a misunderstanding that unfortunately someone's going to find out the hard way yeah every year there's always somebody that grabs the wrong bag or grabs the wrong jug and and and, and kills the field of soybeans and that's pretty disheartening but uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Next up is Danny Winings. What area do you cover, Danny? I cover southeast Missouri, a portion of it, west Tennessee, a little bit of Arkansas, starting to get in a little bit of Kentucky and southern Illinois as well. So. Well, what are farmers concerned about in the Mid South? Well, uh, always, Joe, we've always got concerns about weed resistance and the different trait technologies that are in existence down in our areas right now. And and we know uh, we know extend soybeans are a great soybean choice for weed resistance. The 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 only risk that that, that I see fit with extend soybeans is some of the off-target movements that we're seeing, and uh, and and the realization that the farmers are coming together and creating groups and trying to protect each other in that aspect by communicating well with each other for the different trait platforms that they're going to plant. Well, you know, it's uh, really interesting that Jason Orsworthy talked specifically about that off-target movement in one of our meetings we had not just a few weeks ago, but there's data to suggest that this spraying dicamba by itself is less volatile than if you mix the uh, right. glyphosate with it. Yes, that's what I understood. When we saw Jason Orsworthy meet, he did... Uh, he did enlighten us a lot about that and when they when they mix Pyramax or a glyphosate product with Extend that uh, they they really increase the the volatility of that product by lowering that, the pH it sounds yes, like yes that's correct yes well that's a that's a good tip to to help farmers to to keep the product in their fences instead of hitting some of the other neighbors but 
Um, the other thing that, uh, you know, that they should be concerned about is what in, in their area? Well, it comes I, to- I tell you, it's really not a concern, but just like Brian said, I'll touch up on what Brian said was, you know, these different traits and different types of soybeans out here. We've got to fully understand what we're, what we're planting out here and, and what, uh, what that brings to the table. So like our LLGT 27s. Huge success this year. It's been wonderful. I mean, I mean, these guys in the lighter soils uh, up in southern Illinois and plus in Tennessee and, and a little bit in Missouri as well, I mean, they've took a hold of this technology and run and, and running with it. With the options of running Liberty and glyphosate together and increasing our kill chances with running both of those technologies has been a wonderful thing. And we've seen that from our seed production fields and some of our plots. Um, but... Uh, Really, where the excitement's coming in is this enlist soybean thing. This is going to be, uh, this is really going to be a great thing for especially our southeast Missouri farmers, where the water table restrictions are apply, and uh, I, I think it's going to be a very safe alternative to some of the other technologies that they're that they're currently planning, and and it's going to be you know a lot of safer for the surrounding communities as well. I agree with you, Danny. Uh, the Enlist E3, which is glyphosate, glufosinate, and the new formulation of 2,4-D, you know, we've, we've run fields of it the last uh, two years, and the product stays home, uh, performs well. Um, it's going to be a great option uh, for farmers that uh, want another mode of action to kill those tough, resistant weeds, and I, I really think that you're right. You know, we're only one uh, approval away from full Will launch of that product, and that's uh, the Philippines. Sure. And uh, I know that there's companies out there starting to take reservations, but it's my understanding uh, that you're, those farmers are not going to be allowed to plant those soybeans uh, until we get the Philippines, just because we don't want to create a problem with our shipment of soybeans uh, uh, next uh, fall if we don't have that approval yeah, uh, you in, get- the grain tra- in the grain uh, channel. You have any insight on that, Joe, for right now on the, on well, the Philippines approval? I All I know is when it comes to Enlist E3 on the Philippines approval is that it is number one in the queue. In other words, the next trait that they will approve should be uh, Enlist E3. Mm -hmm. So when will that happen? Well, if you look at history, uh, the Liberty Link GT27s were approved on July 3rd. So will history repeat itself that by July 3rd we'll have this approval? That's a possibility. I know as a company, we are planning to... uh, to do a lot of stewarded production of seed production this year to get ready for potential demand. So stewarded production involves that basically you have to make sure that none of the seed escapes the field. So when the farmer's finished planting that seed field, he has to empty the boxes there, completely clean out the planter, and make sure that everything stays behind in that field. It can't be moved around where there be potential of uh, some soybeans getting into the grain channel. Now, if, if a farmer is going to another field of seed production, he doesn't necessarily have to clean his planter out to go to the next field as long, to as plant long, seed as production. As long as nothing's going to potentially escape. The that's correct. As long as he's not dribbling it down the highway or anything like that, <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> yeah. correct. But, no, it's. Uh, I agree that uh, there's going to be a lot of options coming, and um, I think uh, farmers uh, not only in the Mid-South and Midwest are going to be looking uh, forward to these new, new traits. And, uh, you know, we've, we're right now lining up our seed production acres right now, just starting the process of, of, of finalizing things. So um, we'll be ready, ready for the potential demand if uh, that final approval comes in. Anything else, uh, Danny, that you... I'm just excited for uh, this year and getting planting season started. And, and uh, you know, uh, like Nolan said, talked a little bit about plant populations. Um, you know, met with a few farmers this past week and... Uh, you know, I think the farmers are going to really, you know, get their outlooks looking at profitability uh, versus, you know, you still have to control input costs, but profitability is very, very important on the farm today. That's going to be your main existence for the future. And I think if we can focus on that and what we do is going to impact what our yields are and how much is that going to cost to get me to where I want to be, yep. I think that's all going to become a complete factor for the farm, farming operation this year so. Well, you know, I, I, I know what my dad's taught me in my entire life. He says, always do the best job that you possibly can do because in the end, that will be the most profitable thing. So if farmers can only plant that crop once, you know, pay attention to the weather. Make sure that first 24 to 72 hours, the, 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 when it starts to bring in water to swell the seed, make sure it's not that cold water from that cold rain. Mm-hmm. That's going to eliminate potential stand losses and replant. 
and uh, spray weeds early because there's something about that competition from weeds that the soybean plant senses and it affects yield. The first three weeks are critical that that's, that stay clean and let that canopy effect take over. But I agree, I agree that it's not just focused on how cheap you can buy something. You've got to focus on how high a yield, how much can you grow your yields. And this past year, you know, the farmers that had 70 bushel soybeans, um, they're, they're looking at uh, their profitability and saying, hey, I'm profitable. Even with uh, $9 soybeans, when I get my $1.63 uh, subsidy, um, you know, that, that's a profitable level for most farmers. Absolutely. So, yep. so the yield is the yep. lowest, the fastest way and keeps the lowest cost. There's no yep. question about it. Sure. So anything else to add for this uh, episode of Cup of Joe? I really appreciate you having us, Joe. It's yeah. been it's a wonderful experience. We're, we're, we're glad to be here and be able to partake in uh, episode 12. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and as always, Mershman Seats, thank you for your business. And uh, if there's anything uh, that you would like us to discuss on Cup of Joe, please bring it forward and uh, we'll get it on next episode. I'll give you a little bit of a preview for next week. We are going to feature one of our dealers who just retired that – uh, is was the longest active seed dealer in our company. His name is Jack Salmonick, and he's from Nichols, Iowa, by Muscatine. It's an incredible story, and we want to share it with you next week. Take care.